shakalaka laka boom shakalaka laka boom shakalaka laka boom oh hi there didn't see you coming but please join me let's have together a cup of pistachio shells and while at it let's solve an algorithmical problem 1737 change minimum characters to satisfy one of three conditions you are given two strings a and b that consist of lowercase letters in one operation you can change any character in a or b to any lowercase letter your goal is to satisfy one of the following three conditions first every letter in a is strictly less than every letter in b in the alphabet second the opposite every letter in B is strictly less than every letter in A in the alphabet and third both A and B consist of only one distinct letter return the minimum number of operations needed to achieve your goal the question here is how many operations would be needed to satisfy every condition so we'll write an algorithm that calculates the number of operations per condition and returns the minimum of the three possible options what does it mean to satisfy one of the three conditions? Let's take a look at each one of them. For the third condition to be satisfied, both A and B to consist of only one distinct letter, we need to flip all letters in both strings to some candidate letter, let's say X. And how many operations do we need to convert every letter in A to X? That's the number of all letters in A minus the number of X's already present in the string because we won't need to do anything for them. Every other letter that's different than X would require one operation to be flipped to X. The same applies to B, to string B. And this is how the solution would look like in code. We'll count all of our characters. The character minus A would actually give you an index from 0 to 26, 0 corresponding to A and 25 corresponding to Z. And once we have all the counts for every candidate character, letters A to Z, we will sum the number of occurrences of that character in both strings and subtract that from the total length of our two strings. That would be the number of operations needed to convert both strings to that character. Easy peasy. We took care of our case three. Let's take a look now at the two other cases, the two other conditions that we could possibly satisfy with less moves. And the first thing to observe is there is a mirror symmetry between them. If you swap A with B, the statement is exactly the same between the first and the second row here. What does that mean? That if we solve the problem for condition one, then we can just flip the logic mirror-wise, swapping in our code B with A everywhere, and the solution will work. Let's then focus our attention to condition one. What does it mean for A to be strictly less than B? Let's take advantage of the logic we came up with for condition three and just tweak it so it works for condition A. If we choose a candidate letter X from the alphabet, and if we make every letter in A smaller than or equal to X, and every letter in B strictly greater than X, then our condition would be satisfied, and we would have all the letters in one of the strings strictly less than all the letters in the other string. We can try that for every candidate letter from A to Z, and see which one of those requires least operations. How many operations do we need to convert every letter in A to be something less than or equal to X? Well, let's count how many letters in A are greater than X. That's in our example only Y's and Z's. We count all of them and that's the number of operations we need. We'll flip them to something very small, smaller than or equal to X. We'll flip them to the letter A, for example. And how many flips, how many operations do we need for the string B? In that example, we'll count all the letters that are less than or equal to X and we'll convert them to something greater, let's say Z. Here is how the solution for condition one would look like. We'll calculate the prefix sums reusing the counts arrays to save memory. 
and make the solution a bit less readable and confusing so that you have to pause here and think about it a bit more. And for every candidate character except for Z, because we cannot really have all characters in B greater than Z, there is no letter after Z. So we can only choose the split point for our logic up to Y. For every character that's not Z, we'll calculate the number of characters in A that are greater than our candidate, let's say X, plus the number of characters in B that are less than or equal to X. These are the characters we need to flip. We need to apply an operation to, to make them, in the case of B, bigger. In the case of string A, we need to make them smaller. And we'll keep the result if it's better than our current minimum. The logic for condition 2 is exactly the same and as I said we're just swapping the places of B and A to reflect that mirror symmetry. And that's it. Prefix sum calculation, first and second conditions and the third condition here which we'll be calculating before we mess up our counts array, before we overwrite the actual counts with the prefix sum counts. At the end we'll return the minimum which we found across the three conditions and we are done and c'est fini <laughs> this problem was asked by google one to two years ago it's marked as medium but i'd say that there isn't a ha moment i qualified medium to hard once you figure out that you can do this split below and above a given character, it's easy from there, but to come to that idea takes some mental energy. But isn't this the reason we are here to let our mental energy flow? Drown the problem. Let it flow, let it flow. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye. See you when I see you.